Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Polly. And welcome to AP Podcast 15.3. There was no 15.2, nor was there a 15.1 that you had to watch. I'm going to put them up a little later for review. But um, we're hopping right in there. We did those old school uh, through a special request, um, which may be written in orange, but we'll see. So we're going over precipitation reactions, KSP expressions, finding molar solubility, finding KSP, Q, and precipitate. So basically we're going to do a lot of problems. So you need your multiple choice sheet to do that. So let's hop right into that. Solubility equilibrium. Everything is a little bit soluble. If the KSP is 1 times 10 to the negative 32, that still means that a little bit is soluble. So what we need to be able to do first is write the solubility equation for these things. So write the KSP for the solvation, which would mean dissolving, of calcium fluoride. So calcium fluoride is CaF2, calcium is plus 2, fluoride is minus 1. And when it ionizes, I would get calcium plus 2 plus F negative. And I would have two F negatives, which balances the charge and the number of fluorines, which is kind of nifty. Plus two, minus two times minus one would do it. Okay. So now my K expression for it, K, remember Ks are all the same. KSP just means it's solubility. So it's going to be calcium plus two in brackets times fluoride squared. Okay, so isn't that nice? So that's it. Notice it is not over calcium fluoride. This is not here. Why? Because that is a solid. So you don't put it in there. So the answer is calcium times fluoride squared. Oh, so I guess I did calcium fluoride, and it says for molar solubility of tin hydroxide, I guess I need to do that one a little bit differently. Um, let me just skip that one for now um, because I want more space to do it. So there you go. There's nothing for 72. Um, silver chromate has a KSP of 9E negative 12. Calculate the solubility in moles per liter of silver chromate. Find the solubility for KSP. Negative X is solubility. We're going to ice diagram this bad boy. Ag2CrO4 is a solid. And if you remember dissolving equations from before, 2Ag positive plus CrO4 negative 2. Now, we know that this is a solid, so I don't really care about it much. I'm going to ice diagram it, though. Um, so I have some. And before any of it dissolves, I have nothing and nothing. The change is going to be minus x. Okay. This is going to be plus 2x, and this is going to be plus x. Okay. At equilibrium, I'm going to have I don't care. Now, why don't I care? Because it's a solid. Okay. At equilibrium, I'm going to have 2x, and I'm going to have x. So my k expression... KSP, if you prefer, would be Ag positive squared times chromate. For my KSP, I also know that KSP is 90 negative 12. And I have 2x squared, which I'm going to change right away to 4x squared, so I don't forget, times x, which I'm going to change right away to 4x cubed. And I'm going to get out my calculator that I know how to use, unlike somebody who uh, only is referred to in orange. 9e negative 12 divided by 4, enter, raised to the quantity 1 divided by 3 root, and x equals 1.31e negative 4. And remember, x is solubility, so that's how many moles dissolve per liter. Again, this is done in molarity, so this is the molarity. If I want to know the concentration of Ag positive, it would be 2x, that would be 2.62e negative 4. And this is the molarity of chromate, and it's also the solubility, the molar solubility. Good, so keep going if it'll change. Find the solubility in moles per liter of lead 2 chloride. So PBCl2 is in equilibrium with lead plus 2, plus 2 Cl negatives. Um, and again, ice diagram when I have precipitation reactions or dissolving reactions. This is an insoluble salt. KSP is 1.63, negative 5. So I have some. Nothing, nothing. Minus x, plus x, plus 2x. Oops, that's a nothing. That's not a 2. Um, equilibrium, I don't care. x and 2x. So my KSP expression is going to be 1.63 e negative 5 equals x times 2, whoops, 
sorry about that, x times 2x squared. So I'll solve for that. So 1.63, second e, negative 5, divided by 4, not 2. Enter, and then raise to the quantity 1 divided by 3 root, and x equals 0 0.0159, or that's good enough, um, molar. And that is the molar solubility, because molar solubility, OK? Isn't that nifty? I kind of like that one. Find cast P from solubility. Ice diagram again, minus x is your solubility. The following question refers to the following. Isn't that following kind of funny following? <laughs> the solubility of silver the solubility of silver phosphate, Ag3PO4, is blah, blah, blah. What is the KSP? So that's the solubility, so this is minus x. So I'm going to do my ice diagram again, Ag3PO4 in equilibrium with Ag positive, that's 3 Ag positive, plus phosphate, negative 3. Now, I'm going to start off with sum, 0, 0. Now, they told me the solubility is this. So that's my minus x. So this is going to be minus 1.62e negative 5. This is going to be plus 3 times 1.62e negative 5. And this is going to be 1.62e negative 5. So at equilibrium, if I don't care, and I have 3 times 1.62 second e negative 5, which is 4.86e negative 5 and 1.62e negative 5. Now my k expression is still going to be Ag positive cubed times phosphate. So um, this is going to be 4.86e negative 5 cubed. Notice how that's going to make my exponent very small times 1.62e negative 5. So, I, so I'm going to cube that times 1.62, whoops, second e negative 5, and that is 1.86e negative 18, and that is my KSP. Okay. So, Little of this, little of that, same thing. All ice diagrams, all happy all the time. Solubility in moles per liter of so solubility again is going to be the minus x. Calculate the KSP. Um, Ag2CrO4 equilibrium. Ag positive, two of them. Chromate negative, two. Sum zero zero minus x plus oh not minus x. Sorry about that minus 1.4e negative something 4 plus 2 times that, 2.8e negative 4. I could do that with my head, which is why I didn't show it doubling. And 1.4e negative 4. And I usually do show the 2 times it and then that regular one. And then at equilibrium, I have I don't care, 2.8e negative 4 and 1.4e negative 4. And then my KSP is going to be Ag positive squared times chromate. So 2.8 e negative 4 squared times 1.4 e negative 4. And then you get whatever answer you get there. I'm trying to keep this a little shorter so you can run that in your calculator. Now on this one you have to work it out and it's kind of viciously bad. Which of the following salts shows the lowest solubility in water? Okay, so solubility, remember, is minus x. Okay, so look at that. Woo, doggies, that is a negative 49. <sighs> oh, look at that, a negative 72, negative 54, negative 12, negative 13. So uh, let's take a gander at them, okay? So for silver sulfide, <clears throat> excuse me, AG2S. I don't think anyone's going to care. They're going to try and shorten, speed this up a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be at, I'm going to hop all the way down to the end part. And this is going to be an I don't care about it. And this is going to be a plus 2x. 
and this is going to be an X. So KSP is going to be 1.6E negative 49 equals 2X squared times X. X equals uh, 1.6 second e negative 49 divided by 4 raised to the quantity 1 divided by 3 and I have 3.42 e negative 17 okay and this was AG2S if I were to do BI2S3 and I would have two bi plus threes plus three s negative twos. So I have sum zero zero and at equilibrium I'm going to have I don't really care two x and three x. So my k expression is going to be one e negative seventy two equals two x quantity squared times three x quantity cubed. Now I'm going to rewrite that to be 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 times 9 is 27x to the fifth. Just to make sure we're all on board with that. 1 second e, negative 72, divided by 27, and then raise it to the quantity 1 divided by 5 quantity, and I have 2e, net 2.06e, negative 15 equals x, and that would be a molar. This is a molar too. Okay, so solving for x gives me the molarity for it. That's pretty nasty, huh? Um, and then you keep going through those same ones. So let me do HGS. Now HGS is a little nicer, and HGS is going to be like MNS. So HGS is going to turn into HG plus 2 plus S negative 2. So I'm going to get x and x. Right. So the K for HGS is 1.6E negative 54, whoops, 54 equals X squared. So 1.6 second E negative 54, uh, enter, I guess I need to raise that to the, uh, I guess I could raise it to the 1 half power since I already put it in there, but I wanted to square root it, but that's okay. And X equals 1.26e negative 27. So the lowest solubility in water is going to be the one that has the biggest negative exponent. MNS is very much the same, right? So it would also be, because I would get one of each, it would give me x squared. So let's see if I can go back to blue. Um, 2.3e negative 13 equals x squared x equals, I know it'll be bigger than negative 27, but um, oh, I wanted to square root that. Oh well, second root, second answer now, and it is 4.80 e negative 5. So then that's the answer to this one. And then the last one I just hope isn't the right one, um, but it would be very much like this guy. Right. Do you see how this would have a coefficient of a 2 and a 3? So I'm going to have 2x squared and x. So let's see if I can put it over here. So 8.9e negative 12 equals 4x cubed, which is just like that guy because that has the same setup. So 8.9 second e negative 12 divided by 4, enter, raised to the quantity 1 divided by 3, enter and it's 1.30 e negative 4. So the lo lowest solubility is the one that has the biggest number, which is the mercury one. Yay. Precision. And sometimes it, and sometimes it, I should change slides now. Okay, if Q is greater than K, you get a precipitate. Q is product over reactants, just like before. So this is another equilibrium expression. If P is too big, if products is too big, it'll shift to the reactants, so it'll make solid reactants. Remember, I always have a solid yields positive plus negative ions, right? So if it's an equilibrium reaction, if I have too many of these, it'll shift to the left and precipitate. 
So let's do one. KSP of aluminum hydroxide is blah. At what pH will a 0.8 molar aluminum solution begin to show signs of precipitation? By the way, precipitation begins, for all intents and purposes, at um, KSP. All right. So aluminum hydroxide is ALOH taken thrice. It's in equilibrium with aluminum plus 3 plus 3 hydroxides. Um, so it's one, we want to know at what pH this will happen. So 0.8 molar aluminum plus 3. So what we have is my KSP expression is aluminum plus 3 times hydroxide ion squared. Cubed, pardon me, cubed. So my aluminum ion concentration is 0.8. My KSP is 2E negative 32. And then I'm looking for X, which is cubed. So X equals 2 second comma negative 32 divided by 0.8. Enter, raised to the quantity 1 divided by 3 quantity. And I have 2.92 E negative 11, which is hydroxide. So at what pH? Well, if I negative log 2.92 E negative 11, I get negative log, second answer, 10.53, which is pOH. So minus 14 and ignore the negative sign. So pH is 3.47. Yay. Last problem. Woohoo! Oh, does that look hard. KSP for barium fluoride is blah. When 10 milliliters of 0.01 molar NaF is mixed with 10 milliliters 0.01 barium nitrate, will it precipitate form? So BAF2 is what we're looking for. So, ah, 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 ah. So will it precipitate form? So what I need to do is think of, do my barium fluoride dissolving equation, or at least consider it. Ba plus 2 plus 2F negatives. Um, 10 milliliters of 0.01 molar and 10 milliliters of 0.01 molar. Notice how I'm diluting them. So my concentrations will be not 0.01, but half as much, 0.005 molar. 0.005 molar. See how this goes from 10 milliliters to 20 milliliters, which will cut my concentration in half. So my KSP, my K expression, is barium plus 2 times fluoride. That plus, I meant times. So my KSP value is 2.4 E negative 5. Oh, no, I don't. I want to find Q. So, and then I'm going to compare it to K. So this is Q, not K. So my barium is 0 0.005, and my fluoride is 0 0.005 squared. So my answer is 0 0.005 cubed, 1.25 E negative 7. And that equals Q, and K is 2.4 E negative 5. That's K, and K is...